Now, sometimes you could get lucky, and one day as you're driving through a neighborhood, you could find a mower, blower, or possibly a trimmer on the corner by the trash cans. If that does happen to you, I'd recommend that you stop and pick it up, whatever it is, and take it home and see what the issue might be. You never know, you just might end up with a new item to use on your own lawn, or if you don't need it, give it away to someone who might be in need. In today's video, we're going to look at this Troy Build branded lawnmower, and the problem is that it won't start. Now, I picked up this mower in my own neighborhood when I was leaving one day for lunch. It was sitting by the curb with a sign on it that said free. I quickly pulled up to it, jumped out, and put it in the back of my car, waved at the camera in the front of the window, and drove off to get my lunch. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work out on yours. If things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. So when I found this mower, it was springtime, and more than likely they may have tried to get it out for their first mow to knock down the weeds, but it seems as though it wasn't starting for them. Now they could have easily taken this mower to a repair shop and got it repaired for around $60 to $100, but I guess they felt that money was better spent on just getting a new mower instead. Now there's nothing wrong with that idea, but if they had just followed the instructions in the owner's manual, they could have avoided this whole situation. In the owner's manual for this particular mower, if it's not going to be used for 30 to 90 days, it's recommended that you use a fuel stabilizer in the tank. Now, if it's going to be longer than 90 days, I would recommend that you just run the engine until the fuel tank is empty. Unfortunately, it would seem that the previous owners are not good at following instructions, as seen by the oil level being well above the full mark. Now, more than likely, there's got to be a full quart of oil in this engine, which is twice as much as what the engine calls for. Next, I'm going to try and start it and see what it does or doesn't do. So of course it's not going to start for us. What I'm going to do next is to physically prime the engine with some fuel from my chemical bottle and see if it's going to run on it for a few seconds or if something else happens. And to be quite honest, what the engine does after this kind of took me by surprise. So it started, but it took off rather slowly, but once it got going, it stayed running without any help from me. At first, I thought maybe the automatic choke system might have failed and that the choke flap might be stuck open, but after getting a closer look, you can see the choke flap is closed just like it's supposed to be when starting a cold engine. Now, the other idea I had is either fuel-related or carb-related, and since they go hand-in-hand, -hand, I think I'll just go and tackle both possibilities at the same time. So the most likely issue is that the gasoline in the tank is a lot older than I think it is. As gasoline ages, it doesn't have quite the explosive energy like it did when it was new. If you've ever tried to start a fire with fresh gasoline, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if you tried to start a fire with old gasoline, I think you'll see that's a lot less energetic to catch fire. Now after draining the fuel and looking at the color of it, it's pretty obvious it's not fresh and it's probably more than a year old. I think that's the reason why it was starting so strangely. As it was trying to run, it was also pulling in some of the old gasoline and causing it to stumble the way that it did. After dumping the oil, you can see that it definitely needed to be changed, but as I thought, this oil has been changed at some point. This is not the original oil from 8 years ago. It would seem that they were at least trying to take care of it, which is somewhat refreshing from what I normally find. I'd recommend changing the oil at least once a year, preferably at the end of the season versus at the beginning, but every 2 years works just as good. However, the engine won't last as long, but it's better than never, I guess. Now it's hard to tell if this blade has been sharpened or if it's a replacement blade. So far though, I'm very happy with this mower. It looks as though it was taken care of and they really tried their best. Now this mower is over 8 years old and maybe they figured it had a good run and it's finally time to get a new one. But to be quite honest, aside from any lemons from the factory and with good basic maintenance, I don't have an issue seeing this mower lasting for another 8 years. Just stay away from hitting any rocks, stumps, or anything else hard as a matter of fact. As you can see, there was way too much oil in the engine, but to be honest, it looks as though it did a great job in keeping the engine well lubricated. Just remember to take your time when adding oil and it will pay off in the end. Oh, on this type of engine, you can see the build date and the engine model printed on the side of the block. You can use this information if you need to find parts for the engine. The next thing I want to do is to remove the fuel bowl on the car, but not only to clear the fuel jet, but to also get rid of the last bit of old gasoline. 
Now, since I know the engine starts and runs after physically priming it, I know the carb is more than likely clean. That means I'm only interested in the fuel jet and the fuel in the bowl and not the rest of the carb. That's the reason why I'm not taking off the entire carb. Now, after taking off the small screws, I'll just pry the bowl free and we'll be able to get the old gasoline out of the carb and then look at the jet. So here's the last bit of that old gasoline. It is kind of strange that I didn't see more fuel come out of the carb though. I do want to show you that this is gasoline and that there's no water in it. To do that, I'll just pour it onto this old table and you'll see that it soaks right into the wood. If there was any water in it, it would not have soaked into the wood. Instead, it would just lay on top of it. Now it's not very scientific, but it is a cool trick though. The last item I want to tackle is the fuel jet at the bottom of the pickup. All we have to do is to make sure it's clear. Like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure it's not clogged, but I'm still going to make sure it's as clear as it can be. After that, we can then start to put the carb back together. Just make sure the bowl goes back on the same way it came off. I don't think it's even possible to install the bowl in the wrong way, but some people can be very stubborn. Also, when putting the screws back on, I would take turns on tightening the screws. This will help to ensure that the bowl will be pulled up to the carb as straight as possible. If the bowl is crooked, the carb might leak fuel, which could potentially be a fire hazard. There is one more thing I want to at least talk about, and I really want to get an answer to this whole situation. So I've been informed that some of the viewers have installed inline filters on this engine and it's helped to keep the carbs from clogging their fuel jets. What I want to know is how in the world do you get them to fit? Taking account of the ports on the carb and the fuel tank, there's almost no room for this filter. The filter would be basically touching the carb and the fuel tank at the same time. There's also one other issue. The size of the openings in the screen are so big, which means they won't filter all that much. However, if you look at the bottom of the tank, what you see is a round dome. Now this dome is actually the tank filter, and the reason it looks so strange is because the screen's openings are so small that you can't see through it like in the aftermarket one. That means the OEM tank filter is much better than most of the other filters aside from those with paper elements or high priced filters. Now before I go on, I'm going to put some gasoline into the tank and the reason I'm doing it now is because I want to check to see if the carb is going to leak and it's a lot easier to see it with the air filter base out of the way. Now this might take a few minutes so I'd walk away for a bit. I've seen it leak within 2 minutes or as late as 5 minutes. I'm not sure why the variation in time but it's better to know it's leaking now versus later on when you're mowing the lawn. After several minutes, I don't see any drops of gasoline on the deck, so I'm certain it's not leaking. After that, I'll then replace the air filter base along with a new air filter. Now these are very affordable and it's worth replacing them every few years. Also, don't forget to reconnect the breather hose from the engine to the port on the back of the air filter base. If you forget, the engine will try to breathe in unfiltered air from this opening and there's a good chance the engine will wear out sooner than later. Just as a side note, if you happen to lose the air filter cover, you can still use the mower, but you need to find a way to keep the filter in place. If you can't get a filter soon enough, you can try blowing out the filter with compressed air, but be very careful not to use high pressure, otherwise you'll destroy the paper element. We're finally at the most important part of this whole thing, and that's of course adding oil to the engine. Now even though this engine seems to do well for the last several years being overfilled with oil, try not to overfill it if possible. Just take your time and add a few ounces at a time. Now the manual says this engine requires about 15 ounces of oil, so if you just want to measure out that amount and pour it into the engine, I don't have an issue with it. Just make sure you know how much your particular engine wants because yours may not be the same. Now this one is right under the full mark, which is just fine, so we'll move on to the last item on our list. Now this part a lot of people overlook and for good reason. I'm of course talking about lubricating your wheels. If your mower is a push mower, this is very important because it'll make it easier to use. But even if your mower has self propel lubricating the wheels will keep them from robbing power from the engine and that means you'll have more available for the blade. Now you don't have to take the wheels off to do this, but doing so gives you a chance to clean any grime off the axle. That way when you add lube to it, it'll work even better. So I'm using plastic safe lithium grease, but any type of lube will do. I would keep away from a heavy grease such as wheel bearing grease, but it's your mower so put whatever you want on it. And if you feel like using used motor oil because you have it around, go for it. As for me, I'm going to use a thinner lubricant. Just be aware that once you start lubricating your wheels, you need to keep doing it. To be honest, the best thing to do would be to just clean the axle and the opening in the wheel with brake cleaner and then just reinstall it. But I'm going to do what I think is right and so will you, even if that's nothing at all. The last thing to do is to get the mower on the ground and try starting it. Hopefully, we didn't just waste our time.
so the engine started and ran without too much of a fuss. Now there is a rattling from the top of the engine, but I do believe it's just a recoil, so I'm not worried about it. As long as I don't hear a knocking noise from the engine, I'm fine with it. Now next, I'm going to restart the engine and make sure it doesn't have an issue. Fortunately, it started again with no issues. All in all, I'm really happy with this mower. It's in great shape, and aside from giving it a good cleaning and doing some maintenance to it, I think it's ready for the next mowing season. And hopefully, if all goes well, it won't be its last one. In fact, if the maintenance is kept up, I don't see an issue with it lasting a couple more years easily before it starts showing any signs of excessive wear. So what would I do to keep this from happening again? Easy, I would insist on using 100% gasoline and if not all year round, at least start to use it near the end of the mowing season. And if you can't get 100% gasoline, then I would use a good stabilizer. Now, not all stabilizers work, it's a sad fact, but there are plenty of videos online of consumers testing them. Watch them and then pick one that you feel comfortable using. And if you don't wanna use it all year long, then at least start to use it near the end of the mowing season. That little bit of effort might keep you from having to drain all the old fuel out of your tank and carb at the start of the next mowing season, but to be honest, I would just run the mower dry before storage, it's just a lot cheaper. Now, I have heard lots of arguments against draining the fuel, something about seals and gaskets, but I would just pick a way that you know works and stay with it, at least that's what I'm going to do until something better comes along. So my question is, do you leave fuel in your mower while it's in storage? And if you do, do you add a stabilizer to it? I know some of you have really short winters, so there really isn't a storage problem. So I'm mainly asking those who have really long winters of five or six months. Luckily, where I'm at, it's nowhere near that amount. Now, there's really no right or wrong answer to this question, but I think it's just risky to leave fuel in the tank for a really long time, especially if it contains any amount of ethanol in it. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.